Why agricultural drones are about to take off in the United States, we're gonna talk about it, don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you so much for stopping by. Well, as you can see, I am here with my giant friend, the DJI Agras T30. Uh, this thing is massive, it's awesome, uh, can cover a lot of acreage. I think they say 40 acres an hour. Uh, that's probably generous. It's probably a little bit more in real, uh, a little bit less in the real world, sorry. But this is one of the agricultural drones that's a really good example, maybe a, an extreme example, that is starting to catch on throughout the United States. We have worked with clients around the United States for agricultural drones, from the DJI Agras T10 to the T30, uh, to the Phantom 4 Multispectral, you name it. We have been working with clients uh, to get them up and running in agriculture. Now we've been doing this for roughly five or six years and we are really just over the past year seeing the growth that is happening. We are seeing more and more phone calls. We are seeing more and more people watching our videos and trying to get more information on these drones. But today what we wanted to do is talk about why those drones are taking off in the United States uh, by giving you examples of things that we've done with clients, by giving you other examples that have been brought to us and just stuff that we found on the internet. So we're gonna go through a list, let's get started. Up first is spraying for weeds. Now we worked with some folks uh, at the Mendota Ranch down in Canadian, Texas. You should look them up on YouTube, really, really interesting channel. But they have like 11,000 acres of land and they've got a bunch of invasive weed trees that are sucking up all the water and taking the nutrients out of the trees and out of the growth that they want to actually grow. So they developed a way to get rid of these invasive trees and they used it by using something like a paintball really. And they actually would shoot it from a helicopter onto these trees. Uh, that was the way they were doing it. But they came to us thinking maybe they could do something with a drone. So that's what they're doing right now. They are testing how this drone can work can it go drop those balls on each individual tree? And the truth is it absolutely can. We've tested it here. We know what these drones can do. So really, really innovative stuff, but this is one of the reasons that agricultural drones are starting to take off. Up next is cross-pollination. Now we had a client bring this idea to us. Uh, basically when he's trying to, to grow hybrid corn, he has one row of male, and then three or four rows of female. Well, the male has to then fertilize the females, and usually they just use wind to make this happen. But if you don't have any wind, then you're gonna lose a big portion of your crop. Or you may not even have your hybrid corn, honestly, just because the wind didn't blow. So what our client did was he took a big drone, maybe not the size of this, but you could certainly do it with the T30, but he would fly really low above the crops and cross pollinate them that way. So saving him some big money and it doesn't involve actual pesticide or, or anything else, he's not even spraying anything. He is just getting the wind kicked up so that it will kick things up out in the field and cross pollinate those plants. So really interesting way to do it. Uh, thanks to our clients for bringing that to us. They probably wanna be unidentified, but we thank you for bringing that to us. And if you've got ideas, obviously send them to us. We love hearing your ideas, but let's get on to the next one. Now, as I said, you can drop pellets from this drone. It does have a hopper and really that kind of gets your imagination going. Like, what could I actually do with this? And one thing that we got to do is we got to feed thousands of koi fish using one of these drones. Normally the guy that is running the place is driving around on a golf cart and feeding them by hand. He was looking for an easier way to feed his fish. So we went out and we showed him exactly how it could be done. Another really cool way you can use an agricultural drone. All right, next up is spraying for COVID. Now we're living in some rough times. It's gotten a little bit better, obviously, during the time of, of this taping anyway, uh, but we need all the help we can get. And one of the things that we were called on to do to demonstrate for the Carolina Panthers, how we could take one of these drones, it wasn't this drone exactly, but how we could take one of the DJI agricultural drones and actually spray the stadium down for COVID. So before or after a game, we would go in and spray the stadium for COVID. Now, when we went down, we were just spraying water. We were just doing a demonstration on how this could be done. And honestly, they didn't end up purchasing a drone because they wanted it to also be able to fly inside in the corridors. And these are just too big 
uh, to do that. Think about spraying like disinfectant over a playground. We've done that as well, uh, where before or after kids are playing, you could spray it down because kids are obviously spreading COVID like crazy but you could go spray down all that equipment before and after using a drone and it would be really quick and really easy. Another big reason agricultural drones are taken off is because colleges are getting interested. We've sold spraying drones to colleges like Purdue University, uh, University of Missouri, Go Mizzou, LSU down in Louisiana. So the list goes on. We've got a bunch more colleges as well, but those are probably the biggest names uh, that you're gonna know. But the colleges are buying these drones to teach our nation's youth and our nation's farmers, our future farmers, exactly how to use these drones. So that means when these kids get a little bit older and they take over their family farm, they're gonna be using drones. So this is a huge one. This really is probably the biggest reason. It's because our young people are learning this technology and they're gonna use it for years to come. Think about using it for mosquito mitigation. Instead of a truck driving around, spraying everything, you could really target areas uh, like bushes and trees and things like that where a truck is not gonna be able to reach and probably spraying a lot less insecticide in the meantime. So not only are you saving a lot of time, but you're also saving on insecticide and really on the health of our country because that insecticide is not good for us to breathe in. And guess what? Every time that truck drives past and it is blowing that insecticide out the back, you're breathing it into your lungs. Uh, so maybe this is a way to lessen that and to make things a little bit better and to make things just a little easier to breathe. You can also use agricultural drones for overseeding. So you could fill the hopper up with your favorite grass seed and go out and literally just use the hopper and spread that seed. So we've done that. It's really a, kind of an easy way to, to get things going and to go out, especially if you've got a big area that you wanna overseed. Um, a drone is a great way to do that. We've also had customers use it for cover crops as well. So really this hopper is a, is a good thing on all of these drones. And, Really, like I said, it gets your imagination working with what else could you put in that hopper uh, to use around your farm. Okay, so this one might be sort of a funny one, but it actually worked. Uh, over the past couple of years, we've taken these DJI agriculture drones and we've filled them with an ice melt uh, that we found on the internet. It's totally organic. Uh, but it's this liquid ice melt that we put in the drone and that's what we use, that's what we've been using uh, to de-ice our concrete. So pretty cool way to do it. You can also put granules in if you wanted to uh, use the hopper on this, but we've been using this liquid spray de-icer and it's worked really, really well. So just another idea on how you could use an agricultural drone, really this time not using it for agricultural purposes, but using it to melt the ice. <laughs> Okay, obviously one of the major things these agricultural spraying drones can do is spot spraying. So instead of going out and spraying your entire field, whether it needs it or not, you are spraying individual spots. Again, saving on whatever chemical you've got in the drone, uh, it's not gonna be spraying as much as a crop duster would. And a crop duster can cover certain areas and it can't cover certain areas. A drone can fit in the areas that it can't fit in. So that's why we always suggest that crop dusters or aerial applicators, um, that you guys start really looking in to this technology. I know it can seem like it's a threat against your current business, but really if you look at it as an additional tool, you're gonna be much better off and you're gonna be ready for the future. Now to use that agricultural spraying drone for spot spraying, we're gonna talk about the Phantom 4 Multispectral because that's what you're gonna use to figure out what spots you actually need to spray. The drone goes up, it has six sensors on it, and each of those sensors is telling a crop analyst something different. So it might say, hey, over here, you need some water, over here, you need some nutrients, but instead of spraying your whole field or feeding your whole field, you're only hitting those specific spots, and that's what the DJI Phantom 4 Multispectral does. It tells you where that drone needs to spot spray. Next up is using an agricultural spraying drone on golf courses. Now there are so many different kinds of grasses 
on a golf course. You've got waterways, you've got all sorts of stuff. Now, a couple years ago, we met with a large group of groundskeepers. They could see the major benefit in this, especially in the waterways. If you're trying to kill algae, if you're trying to kill cattails, this is the perfect kind of technology for you to do that. So golf courses, really interesting place you can use your drone and another reason why there is more interest in agricultural drones. <laughs> Okay, finally, we are seeing a lot of insurance companies that are using drones for crop inspections. Now, the, the drones they're using aren't necessarily agricultural drones, but when you think about it, even the drones you buy from like Best Buy, the totally consumer drones, can be used for so many different businesses in so many different ways, and they can be used on your farm for different things. So crop inspections is just one thing. Keeping track of your animals is another thing. And I think if you take that idea, you use your imagination, you can probably come up with lots of ways you could use even just a consumer drone on your farm. You can get into it at a relatively low cost and really it's gonna improve the way you do things all over your farm. All right, that's it everybody. We'll be back with another video very, very soon. We thank you for stopping by. We hope you hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.